Dr. Laura Mounin, and this is a short video introducing you to a tool called FastQC, which is great for checking Illumina short read data quality. So um, this is a, a workflow or a pipeline showing the flow of sequence information in a genome assembly project, at least focusing on the front end. Raw read data comes in, you inspect it, you take a look at its quality, you trim it and clean it, you assemble, you check the quality of your assembly. If it's good, you carry on. If it's not good, you repeat that quality cleanup and trimming stage using a tool like Trimomatic, for example. The tool FastQC comes in here. It's really good for quality evaluation, and you can use it to take a look at the quality of the raw data before you trim it, but you could also use that same tool at this stage to make sure that the quality trimming was, was effective, that you got better data as a result out of it. So FastQC is a program that will read through raw sequence files and perform a quality check on the data. It'll also give you a handy report with summary data and visuals so that you can take a look at what happened. Um, if you run it online in particular, you'll get these like handy little color-coded um, sets of information that tell you that like, uh-oh, there's adapter content, or, you know, uh-oh, the per base sequencing quality really sucks in here, or yay, your basic statistics were pretty good. So you can run this tool on things like Galaxy, um, and you'll get these kinds of bells and whistles as a result. It will give you some basic statistics output. So for example, tell you things like the file name that went in, and that's always handy to make sure that you ran it on the file you meant to, what kind of file it is, what the encoding information is, like that's the lookup table for encoding scores to relate the encoding um, symbols back to the FRED or Q scores, how many total sequences were in the file, and that can be handy, and then um, how many of them were flagged as having poor quality, this is really handy what the sequence length is. So that way you know um, better, uh, you know more information about the data set, and you can then know whether or not certain types of analyses are appropriate to perform on that data or not. You might also then better be able to look at the final results and um, evaluate your genome assembly by knowing what the read length is here, because there's a variety of read length data that exist in the genomic repositories ranging from like 40 base pairs to now 300 or 350 base pairs for Illumina data, probably more, you know, by the time like person number two watches this video on YouTube. And you can get information like the percent GC, guanine and cytosine content, and that can be useful if you know what it should be in your data set for reference. <clears throat> so this is, um, an example of some additional Illumina data. Um, you know, I don't really know if it's good or bad right now, but I'm just showing you like other possible options here. The total number of sequences vary in these two data sets. The sequence length is only 40, and the one we looked at a moment ago was 251. And the GC content is different in this file versus this file. So um, GC is content is something that can change after trimming, for example because the adapter content in Illumina Reads is going to have a fixed GC content that will likely be different from that of the organism or organisms from which your data is derived. So you can pay attention to those measures. I'm going to remind you what a box whisker plot is here. So a box whisker plot will take a data set and it will plot the, me the median, not the mean, but the median, and then it will plot boxes around it that represent the first, the first and the third quartile, and then, and then outwards from that, and the maximum and the minimum range of the data set. So you can get information on data, uh, very broad descriptive information about a data set by plotting it in a box whisker format, it's descriptive statistics. And I'm showing you that because it's one of the outputs from a fast QC run. Here are two different box whisker plots for two different data sets. This is before trimming on the left, no, sorry, this is before trimming on the right, and this is after trimming on the left, same data set. So the, the crappy data is over here on the right, and um, it's crappy because if you look across the horizontal axis, 
each point on this axis represents one position in a sequence. So this data was 40 base pair sequence data, so it runs from 0 to 40. And so, for example, here at like position number 16, if we walk it up, right, this is telling me what the median and the range is for the quality scores associated with each nucleotide in each read at position number 16, base pair 16. And what I don't like about this is that as the read gets longer and longer, the quality of the data starts to get kind of horrifically bad. So I have some really, really low quality scores and I have a lot too much variability in the data. I want to have tighter, more uniform and higher quality data. So these are really high Q scores. And this data is looking pretty good. It has like a really tight distribution at each read position and it's uniformly better. And um, like FastQC is really good about quality or sorry about color coding things. So like generally green is good in FastQC. Red is not so good. Other distribution data that you can see is the, um, the per sequence quality score. So these are the same like where you are in the read on the bottom horizon, right? And then the, the, the sequence quality scores running up the top. What you want to see is pretty tight quality um, distribution data, not bumps like this or broad bands in the data set. Sorry, I told you this was like position and it's actually mean sequence quality. So here we've got like high quality data and ev all our data is tightly, you know, associated with, you know, more than 36 as the Q score for that data. Whereas here we've got this bump in data where a lot of it is, you know, Q scores of sort of 16 and 17, which is pretty low. And then this broader distribution here. We want data that's tightly adhered around a high quality reads. So we wouldn't want to see data, for example, where there was a, a tight peak, but the peak was down here. That would be unacceptable. We want a tight peak and we want it as far to the right or as high quality as possible. You can look at the sequence GC content and um, uniform GC content is expected from a single genome project. This is a little bit less useful if you're looking at a metagenomic project. So we're just going to focus on single genomes right now. But a nice distribution of around the mean for GC content is, is normal for good quality data sets. These little like jagged lines outside the theoretical distribution indicate that there's some data in there that does not belong to the same organism. And that could be contamination in a genomic data set. So when you run FastQC on RON, you use this command. It's a nice, short, simple command. So you, you run nohup, and then FastQC is calling the command. And then the ofp.fastq.gz is the, um, uh, the input file, right? and nohop fastqc and the orp fastq.gz and ampersand is the um, reverse paired cleaned up data. So both these files came out of Trimomatic and they're now the input file. If you wanted to run fastqc on a data set that hadn't been trimmed yet, you just would adjust the, um, the input data to suit. Okay, So the input shown in green, the forward and the reverse data, it can be zipped. That's totally fine. And the output is going to be a forward and a reverse file. We don't have to tell it what the output will be. It figures that out for itself. There'll be two files. One is an HTML file and one is a .zip file. In order to look at the HTML file, you have to pull it over using FileZilla and look at it on your desktop. Um, and we can do that together in class. So that's just a little introduction to a tool called FastQC that's useful for looking at read quality.